drummingforlife.com. Hey there, it's Vaughn at drummingforlife.com. Aloha, hope you're doing well. So today I want to share with you how I play up-tempo ride cymbal in a jazz swing context. Uh, the technique is a little different. I did another video here uh, on my YouTube channel about uh, playing just kind of medium swing-ish uh, ride cymbal playing and the technique I use for that, which is kind of like skipping a stone on the water. This one is different. In this, this particular uh, video, I'm going to share with you the technique I use to go faster. And it, you really need a different technique to go faster because you have to change the way your body is addressing the symbol. You have to change the way your arm and your hand and your fingers and your wrist all are kind of working with that symbol and the stick to get to create sound. So uh, I'm going to share that with you in just a minute. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and uh, swish that like button and uh, please leave a comment. I I'd love to hear from you and I do respond to all of my comments. So let me show you kind of what I do. All right, so let me show you how I do the, uh, the old push-pull, drop-catch kind of technique. Uh, it's not that hard, but I want to just kind of show you what I do. I think it'll help you, uh, and it's something you can practice just in isolation. So what I'm doing here is um, basically I'm just, with every accent that I'm playing, right, I'm kind of letting this stick drop, just like I was doing with the, with the, the uh, throwing the stone, the stone skipping technique. But what I'm doing here at the end is I'm collecting the stick on that last stroke, so, and bringing it back. So it's really, it becomes all wrist and fingers. This, was, this really ends up being a wrist and fingers kind of technique. Like this. Okay, try it over here. Kind of see what my hand is doing. So the arm just kind of gets it into, into position, gets your hand into position, and then you let the rebound of the cymbal pull you through the rest of it. All right. You notice with my technique, I'm not using this uh, index finger to grip the stick. I'm really, it's really relaxed, just kind of hanging on the side. It's only there just to kind of keep the, keep the stick in position. All right. Like that. So I'm going to go from the top angle here. Right there for a minute. See what am I doing there? Really easy, actually, because I'm using the bounce.
So as you notice, it's a straight, it's a straight kind of thing. It's not, it's not we're not adding that, adding that swing, that swing triplet kind of thing going. It's not really, that's not happening here. We're doing, we're straightening out those notes. Because when we go faster, we just have to. It's just the economy of motion. It's how everything works together. So uh, that's, I think, will give you a really good idea of how you can practice the push-pull or the drop-catch uh, technique. To pull yourself through this pattern and to do it effortlessly and get the most, ma maximize your bounce and really give you that forward motion and open up the sound of the cymbal, you really need, a, you need to make sure you're accenting counts two and four. If I don't accent counts two and four, it is just like start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. All right. If you accent two and four, it's just fluid, flowing, flowing jazz feel. All right. Very different. Uh, I'll demonstrate the two for you so you can kind of hear the difference. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So you can hear, I'm sure, and drop a comment below if you could hear the difference. Uh, the second one really opens up the sound, uh, gives you a totally different uh, sound and resonance from a cymbal uh, that you're just not getting when you're accenting on counts one and three. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, surprisingly, I hear a lot of drummers do that accent on, on counts one and three. Um, and you know, maybe it's it's comfortable. Uh, one of the things with jazz, and I've talked about this in other videos as well, that jazz lives on counts two and four. It lives in the space of counts two and four and the third note of the triplet of each, each count, that accented, that jazz accent. That's where jazz lives. And if we're focusing our energy on counts one and, and three, we're not capturing that. Right? We're not really playing jazz, we're playing something kind of straighter, kind of more square. So make sure you focus in and get that accent on uh, counts two and four. Now another reason why this is really important is because when you want to go really, really fast, it's going to be next to impossible to do if you're accenting on counts one and three. I'm not even going to attempt to show you that because I don't want to kill my arm, but I will show you how to play faster uh, with um, playing uh, with the accent on two and four. So check this out. One, two, one, two, three. All right, so you can see that uh, I've, I'm really relaxed, number one. I could just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. It's really not a problem. My arm isn't getting tired. Uh, and you get some really nice tone, right, out of it. Now, one of the things that's cool is, uh, is I like to break up the pattern. So a lot of drummers will do this too. Uh, rather than just play straight through going ding dang 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 ding it's nice to kind of break up the phrasing a little bit so just some ideas you can you can think about 
you can just play, you know, one, two, I want to slow it down. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Just insert a quarter note in between your patterns and you can shift them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I know I said earlier don't accent counts one and three, but that's if you're this kind of groove, right? That's not really um, kind of getting that big bounce on count two, right? And count four. So it's it's not that kind of technique. It's actually you're kind of you're kind of choking the stick into the symbol on counts one and three. So like this. That's not, you're not going to get good bounce that way. But if you do it like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, you still got that same open and beautiful sound that you do when you use it on counts two and four. So it works. And, but I don't stay there. So I'm not going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Then it doesn't, it starts to lose its swing, right? So it only works in the context of really good two and four accent playing. Um, and so I think if you're, gonna, if you're gonna use it, you know, use it judiciously, don't overuse it. But it's just a nice way to kind of, to change up the feel a little bit, uh, insert a little bit of space. Uh, and you certainly can also just play quarter notes. You could just dun, 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 you know, that works too. Now, as I've said before in the other video on, on ride cymbal playing, uh, you really want to, your attention to detail has to be good. You want that hi-hat and that two and four on your ride cymbal, and even if you're just playing quarter notes on your ride cymbal, you want the count two and four to always line up beautifully, all right? Uh, really an important point. Uh, because again, drumming is a cumulative effect. If you have just a little bit of something out, the whole thing sounds out. It doesn't sound like it's together. So you want to avoid the kind of sloppiness of that and focus really, really intently on getting things to line up, uh, line up really nicely. And one last point is when I'm playing this kind of stuff, I'm thinking about a musical phrase, all right? And those of you who know me and know my teaching, this is what I'm all about. Uh, patterns are just patterns. But if we can't really use them in musical ways and think of them musically and, and make them feel musical in musical contexts, then they're worthless. So this kind of thing, <laughs> Right, there's a kind of an oh, there's kind of overarching phrase there. There's a kind of almost like a rhythmic melody happening just within the ride symbol. So I encourage you to to do that as well. To think of your ride symbol playing as really another voice. I mean, it really is a voice. It's not a timekeeper as as much it is as it is really a voice. So when you get to that super high art of of really communication and conversation. Uh, in your in your drumming, in your jazz drumming, your ride cymbal is going to play a really important part of that conversation. So um, I hope you'll kind of experiment with that. Just a couple more things I want to share with you. I have a really great uh, blog that I am constantly contributing to, uh, and it's all about helping you to become the best drummer you can be. And uh, it's at vonbaronmusic.com. I also teach uh, Zoom lessons, private lessons uh, through Zoom, and I use all these different camera angles when I do it, so uh, students really enjoy it, and I just love to teach, and I would love to help you too if you need some help uh, really taking your jazz drumming to the next level. Uh, I also have my uh, vonbaronstore.com, and over there you can sign up for the private uh, Zoom lessons, as well as there are many, 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 many 
uh, drumless tracks or drum, drum practice tracks that don't have drums that you can work on and uh, work with and work on your jazz playing and really gain some confidence in playing with other people so that that will help you and that will certainly translate to helping you uh, play better on the bandstand. And the last thing I have is my jazzdrumschool.com. Right now I currently just have the Brushes Mastery course up there, uh, but I'm going to have more courses uh, in 2022. So I hope you'll check, the, check out the Brushes Mastery course and, uh, and any other courses that, that come up in the future. So uh, again, that's at jazzdrumschool.com. Well, I hope it was helpful for you and I uh, hope it helps you kind of expand your, your up-tempo ride playing. And as I always say, keep on drumming. Take care. Drumming for life. Dot com.